In the world of pre-builds, there is one constant, sadness. However, for a select few, there may be a faint glimmer of hope in this bleak world. Micro Center pre -builds. And I actually managed to get my hands on one, which was surprisingly difficult to do, considering that Micro Center has made owning one of these systems in Canada punishable by death. Which meant I had to have this PC smuggled over the border inside a UPS delivery person, which means I probably shouldn't touch the box anymore. Um, but anyway, before we check out the system, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor that helped me pay for all the bribes. Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their MP600 Pro LPX NVMe drives with some crazy specs. Look at those read and write figures. Mm. The Corsair MP600 Pro LPX drives are available in capacities up to 4 terabyte, and with its high endurance 3D TLC NAND flash and its low profile heatsink, it's a great option to upgrade the storage not only on your PC, but also your PS5. So if you're addicted to hoarding games and you need some high quality storage in your life, check out the MP600 Pro LPX with the link in the description below. Thanks Corsair for sponsoring today's video. Now considering that Micro Center only sells these PCs physically in store, I had to get a local person to risk their life in order to buy this PC for this video. And that person was none other than Mr. Daps. So thank you very much Mr. Daps for risking life and limb in order to procure this PC for this video. Wow, the UPS smuggler clearly practiced their drop kicks on this box. Damn. Now in the box we get a sheet covering some basic tips on how to plug in the system, some shockingly thick soft foam that the case was shipped in, that's very nice, and then we get some e-waste peripherals. Oh yeah, th these are some real e-waste peripherals right here. It's got a reasonable click though. Okay, nice. I'm gonna go throw these straight in the ocean. Okay, that was a joke. Do not throw e-waste peripherals in the ocean, otherwise I will come to your house and punish you in person. Now looking at the front of the case, you can see that there is a solid front panel, but there is some functional ventilation on the side, and there's no hardcore fan choking going on against this front panel, so it, it should be fine. In terms of front I.O., I'm not sure if this is USB 3 or not, but we do have two ports, a reasonable power button, and a microphone headphone jack. And generally, the build quality feels really good. It's a nice sturdy little case. Now, in my opinion, the power supply placement is not ideal. Uh, there's no ventilation in the top of the case, which means the power supply can only draw used hot sloppy seconds air from inside the case, which that's not great. Now, in terms of rear I.O., it is very usable and we have what looks like the back of a very nice graphics card in here. Uh, so with that, let's open up the system. Whoa, that is a pretty spectacular sub thousand dollar pre-built interior. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section below, but I don't think I've ever seen a PC in this price point. Have dual channel RAM, look at that. Those are two eight gig sticks of RAM in a system that didn't cost as much as a small planet, which is very exciting stuff. Good job, Micro Center. Now next to the dual channel RAM, you'll notice an Intel stock cooler. Now at this price point, it's quite difficult to complain about a pre-built unless it gains sentience and starts nuking Croatia. But an Intel stock cooler is not much better than nuking Croatia, although the CPU under there is an i5-12400, which is a very good CPU, and the stock cooler should more or less be able to manage it, so it's not that bad. Uh, other than that, the motherboard's got some nice little VRM heatsinks around it, and that is actually an ASRock B660 board, which is a standard MATX motherboard, which means you can upgrade that at some point. In fact, there is nothing proprietary inside this system, which is very exciting. Uh, in terms of the SSD, we have a one terabyte NVMe drive, which is again awesome for the price. It comes with a power color Hellhound RX 6600, which I love. I really love these Hellhound cards. They're amazing. Uh, and actually, in terms of the price of this system, 
before tax and everything. I paid $900 for it. And the final price, the final, final price was $9.99. So $1,000. And honestly, for that amount, there is very little to complain about in here. Normally, you'd be lucky if you got a $16.50 and a firm spank on the pot for that. I just can't wait to see how this thing's gonna perform. Now, the only thing that I'm not entirely sure of in this system is the power supply, which is this 650 watt, 80 plus gold rated power spec unit. Now, power spec is Micro Center's brand, but I don't know who the OEM is that makes this power supply for them. Oh no, there's a slight little scratch on the case. Even around the back, we've got reasonable cable management. You can see that we have all of our cables stuffed in the top here so that if we do need some Molex or Sethar later down the line, we do have access to it, which is nice. There's also a big cutout on the back of the motherboard plane, which is pretty standard, but it does make it much easier to swap out the cooler on the system, which we'll do that later in the video. We'll swap out this stock Intel cooler and see how much of a benefit that gives the system. But on that note, let's close it up, fire it up, and see how this system runs, which I'm very excited to do, considering that price to performance wise, I think this PC is gonna be like Lenny in Of Mice and Men, and other pre builds are gonna be like the puppy that he gets. Uh, Windows 11. Okay, VD, let's see what they've got for us on this power spec PC. There's an activation helper thing that's prompting if it wants us to install internet security. Okay, so I'm guessing that is a uh, an antivirus. Uh, so I'm gonna say no. Do you want to remove? Yes. Okay, at least it asks you before installing it. So that's better than just having it on here. And then we have ASRock's uh, RGB software, which I've not interacted with yet. I don't know if that counts as venereal disease or not. I mean, this is a pretty cholera free Windows install we've got here. So good job, good job, Micro Center. Uh, we just have some AMD Radeon software on here, which I like when people add this on, it's nice. Some people don't know that you should install graphics card drivers. So have, having something like this on there is, is always a good, good option in my opinion. And it's got up-to-date drivers in it, which is very good. Awesome. So with that, let's do some gaming on it. Ooh, would you look at that? We've started off with straight up 100% GPU utilization. Now, if you're new to the channel, that is exceptionally rare. In fact, I don't think I've seen that on a pre-built system in a very long time. It's running at 1080p, very high settings. And uh, although we are seeing some GPU utilization dips, that's pretty normal for GTA 5. Uh, it is, however, looking way better than most PCs do. So very promising, good, nice, well done. Let's go to a more demanding game. Let's try Battlefield 5. Wow, at 1080p high settings, this PC is running the crap out of Battlefield 5. Battlefield 5 does have a thing for AMD GPUs and it shows the performance is really awesome. Although with the higher CPU utilization of Battlefield 5, uh, you can see that the CPU temps are creeping up. They're not terrible though, like they're completely acceptable at this point. Let me, let me play for a bit and see what happens with the temperatures. Okay, so it's been a while and the temperatures stabilized very quickly and they're fine, right? It's not that bad. In terms of noise, the system is by no means quiet. Although in a bit, I'll, I'll throw in a new CPU cooler and see how much that actually quietens it down because I think a big amount of the noise in there is that terrible little stock Intel cooler. But in terms of temperatures, it's, it's going perfectly fine and the gaming performance is very good. The system runs really, really well. That is surprisingly impressive. This is running at 1080p with high settings and we're getting about, well, comfortably above 60 frames per second. That's very nice. Oh, that CPU cooler really is audible. Uh, I, I, think, I think the next thing we do uh, after we have a look at a couple of benchmarks is see how much of a benefit we get upgrading that stock Intel vacuum cooler.
Now having a look in here, I actually think that cooler compatibility is going to be quite a big problem because this case is quite shallow. There's not a lot of height clearance for a cooler. Uh, so let me get a budget CPU cooler and see if it fits. Oh, I actually don't think they use the stock thermal paste application on this cooler. That's interesting. And then there's the stock Intel coolers hilarious contact patch on the new Intel CPUs. Now, first off, I'm going to try this new Deepcool AK47, which I think would be quite representative of all just 120 millimeter tower coolers. So let's see if it fits. It very much does not fit. Oh, that's not good. Look at that sticking out like a little outie. Next, I'm going to try out my little Noctua U9S, which is an awesome little cooler. But it is a shame that we can't fit a budget 120mm tower cooler in there because they are more cost effective than this little Noctua. But let's, let's see if it fits. Hey, in terms of clearance, that sucker just fits in there. So that's, that's good. At least we have an option that's going to work in this case. So let me quickly mount that and let's see what difference that makes to the noise and the temperatures in this system. Now I've been playing for a while and the temperatures are quite a bit better on the CPU, but the better temperatures are definitely not the main thing. The system is way quieter. And there's something really annoying about the frequency of sound that that little stock Intel cooler makes. Uh, whereas this Noctua cooler, it's, it, it's just a lot better. So at the end of the day, aside from the loser little Intel cooler, the fact that I don't love the case that they used, and that the rear I.O. and I.O. shield aren't quite lined up properly, which means that some of the USB ports are blocked off, which is something I really feel like they should have caught while testing the system. But it's a thousand-ish dollar pre-built, and considering the insane value you're getting here, even if the system went out of its way to rub sand in my eyes, I wouldn't be that bothered. And if you're blessed enough to live near a micro center, this is a legitimate option worth considering. Which which brings me to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. And until the next video, bye.